thank you everyone for joining. Uh, today, we're gonna to be continuing our series on PLS playbooks uh, with the second installment focusing on the upsell and expansion plays. Um, and so, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you were here in the last session uh, for the free to paid playbooks, some will be review, uh, but we, we wanna make sure we uh, set the stage for folks that are new to this concept of playbooks. Um, quick way of introduction, uh, my, I'm Steven. I lead up the sales and success team here at Calixa. Um, and I actually, I started uh, working around the product-led sales world back in 2015 at Mixpanel. Um, we were selling to product managers and developers uh, and the common motion was that they would try implement the product uh, and then uh, start to realize some value before sales got engaged. Um, and over that uh, time, I, I quickly realized that this was going to be the way that all modern SaaS was sold. So uh, I'm excited to be furthering y'all's education in the space. Uh, we get a lot of questions around playbook best practices. Um, so I think this session will hit home for a lot of folks. Um, so before we dig into the content, we're going to kick things off with a quick poll. Um, so if uh, you didn't automatically uh, get taken over there, uh, you can click into the polls tab. Um, and uh, the first questions we're going to ask are, does your team currently run plays using product data? Um, and do you have specific upsell or expansion playbooks that are currently part of your sales motion. Cool, cool. Let's see. So some results are trickling in. Um, it looks like sometimes is uh, currently the leader for people uh, running plays using product data. Uh, a few people rarely uh, are, are taking advantage of that. Um, and People, it looks like a lot of people are actively creating a upsell and expansion playbook. Uh, so it sounds like this is very timely for folks. Um, so excited to dig into some of the details. Cool. Uh, in terms of agenda for today, uh, so we're going to start with uh, some of the basics. So what are playbooks um, and why you should be using them in your go-to-market motions? Uh, then we're going to dig into the different types. Uh, again, last time uh, we talked about free to paid. So if you're interested in digging more into that uh, world, uh, you can check out the recording from the first session. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, specifically this upsell and expansion motion. Um, and then uh, in the next one, we'll be digging into enterprise account consolidation. Uh, so we'll do a deep dive into this playbook. Uh, and then uh, we're going to walk through a demo of how you can get started um, by operationalizing this um, with Calixa. Uh, so feel free to ask questions in the chat throughout, um, but we'll also save time at the end. Um, cool. So just to kind of quickly level set on what are PLS playbooks? I think uh, there's there's a lot of chatter around playbooks on, on LinkedIn and other communities. Um, but uh, everyone kind of has their own uh, take on what a playbook really is. Um, and the way that I like to think about it is this whole concept of playbooks is built around leveling the sales playing field. So they're really designed to make sure that the newest uh, or least tenured AEs have access to the tools uh, and expertise needed to kind of punch above their weight class and run deals using the same tactics that the best most experienced reps use. Um, and so if rolled out thoughtfully, it's going to ensure that reps are all working with the same info uh, and none of them will feel like they're at a disadvantage. Um, so what does that mean? Well, uh, you know, you can standardize best practices uh, like uh, and up level the, the less tenured reps um, ensures that folks are following best practices to ensure that your, your deals are converting at uh, you know, the highest rates possible. Uh, and really they're, uh, they're gonna be tailored for different tactics uh, for different PLS motions, whether that's uh, customers at different 
stages in the activation life cycle or um, if there are different desired outcomes in mind. Um, and who uh, really reps and sales leaders benefit from playbooks and that reps are equipped with the insights and the confidence they need uh, so they know they're taking the right action um, at each step in the sales process. But sales leaders, uh, you know, benefit from the fact that they're able to leverage or they're able to know that the team is following uh, the best practices that they've identified. Um, cool. So with that, one of the most common questions we get when talking with PLG companies who are building the, this out at, for the first time you know, is what are the most common plays that uh, a company like ours should start with? So in this webinar, uh, we're going to focus on the upsell and expansion playbook. Um, the other two here are generally the, the others that I'd recommend um, as a good place to start for any uh, you know, PLG company or, or company that's looking to add a PLG motion to their traditional sales-led motion. Um, cool. So um, the upsell expansion playbook. Uh, this one... It, uh, can vary quite a bit based on how your product uh, is priced um, or what your business model looks like. So what we've seen uh, across the PLG companies that we work with is there's typically three different ways of um, companies kind of charging uh, or uh, billing for their product. Um, there's the classic SaaS seat-based model. Um, you know, this was pioneered by companies like Salesforce where um, you want more sales reps in the tool, um, it, it's going to cost more. Then there's this uh, huge emergence of um, companies that bill based on uh, usage, uh, super common in the developer space. So uh, you use more bandwidth, you uh, create more sites, um, you push more builds. Um, those all consume resources and uh, you know enterprises uh, are going to pay more for uh, higher usage caps. Um, and the, uh, the third is product. So it could be additional functionality. It could be cross sells into, uh, you know, related products. Um, but each of these are going to have kind of a different goal um, and then a different uh, strategy uh, to ensure that you are successfully converting uh, or upselling um, in this case. Uh, so with the seat-based models, typically, uh, you know, there's this hybrid of you want to uh, kind of ensure bottoms-up expansion, so make sure the end users are happy, um, but also uh, push for a top-down buy-in. Um, it's pretty easy to get, uh, you know, an individual user to maybe swipe their credit card for a, a low-tier $25 a month plan. Um, but once you get that groundswell uh, and you you're going to need to move up the chain to ensure that the decision maker that's going to sign off on uh, the hundred person team uh, using the product is bought in. Um, so we'll talk a bit more uh, in a bit more detail about that. Um, with usage, uh, a lot of the playbooks are focused around uh, driving adopt adoption, introducing new use cases, um, deepening adoption, with existing users, um, and ultimately, like making sure that the product is delivering value. Uh, if the product's delivering, um, generally, that's a, a good precursor to usage increasing over time. Um, and then finally, uh, with you know these product cross sell opportunities, um, typically one of the the strategies that people employ is you know kind of giving early access uh, or um, some sort of gated uh, usage of premium functionality uh, and tracking that usage so you can understand when a customer is um, you know, using a premium feature and getting value from it. Uh, and those users typically have a higher likelihood of converting to paying for um, higher tier plans. So let's go ahead and dig into uh, some specific examples. Um, I think the, the most basic one to start with uh, is on the seat-based model, uh, adding new users. Uh, we typically think of a playbook as being uh, broke up into three parts. Uh, you have the signal uh, or kind of the trigger that kicks off that play. Uh, you have the messaging, uh, 
um, or how you should communicate this or think about um, the, the play in uh, with regards to the customer and then the tactical action. So uh, what do you do? Are you, uh, you know, creating a deal? Are you adding that user to a sequence, et cetera? So uh, with the basic example, um, you see that uh, there is an account that's adding new users. They're already paying something, but their usage has increased. Um, one of the common, uh, uh, you know, ways of uh, getting this user uh, interested is like, let's offer an onboarding session. I want to make sure that, you know, not just the users that have been using the product for a while, but the new users are seeing value. I want to make sure I'm uh, uncovering any potential uh, roadblocks uh, and ultimately making sure that the account um, is in a healthy state. Um, it also gives like onboarding uh, gives me an opportunity to uh, discuss what higher tier plans would look like, assuming that you uh, have the right decision maker or uh, department head uh, involved. It's a little, it's a classic give get. You're giving them some training uh, and in response, uh, you're chatting about what they're add someone to, oh, I got a message that my internet, okay, cool, I think we're back. Um, so you'd want to add them to an outreach sequence uh, and make sure that the decision makers are involved. Cool. <clears throat> so the next one um, is you have an active decision maker. So this is actually, this is a great sign um, for a lot of uh, PLG companies, uh, one of the hardest things typically is going from end users up the chain to anyone that has uh, real purchasing authority. Um, so in this case, you see that a decision maker is logging into the product, they're taking some actions. Um, it's important that you treat this user differently than uh, the standard end users um, that care about usage, but don't really care about the purchasing process. Um, so in this case, you're going to want to take a different set of actions with different messaging. Um, and that messaging should be focused more around, you know, what the long-term business case is, uh, what the plan for, uh, the team growth is, if they're planning on, you know, hiring, uh, more employees that are going to be using the tool. Um, so you want to up-level the conversation here. Um, and in this case, one of the, you know, corresponding actions, since you've already identified a decision maker in the product, um, assuming that call goes well is like, you're going to want to automatically create an opportunity in the CRM in Salesforce. Sweet. So the third example uh, would be, you know, there you see increasing usage uh, before a renewal. Um, so this is uh, also a great opportunity uh, for uh, an upsell conversation. Um, if there's a renewal, generally customers are um, expecting, uh, you know, some change. Uh, in their their plan, um, whether it's uh, you know just a renewal with a better discount, uh, they're uh, expecting to pay more for a bigger team for the next year. Um, whatever it may be, it's important that going into that renewal, if you're going to be uh, trying to command a higher uh, purchase price, that you kind of level set on the value that the customer is getting. So um, whether your uh, AEs are running the uh, kind of value conversations in the QBR process themselves, uh, or if this uh, requires getting a CSM involved, um, really it's a, an opportunity to level set on the health of the account and identify if there are any uh, gaps that are, uh, you know, preventing this customer from getting to the value they should be at. Um, and so this could be, uh, the action would be you know, creating a a task to follow up with the right people internally to make sure that um, you have everything set up for that QBR. Again, these are just three examples of um, what we've seen as some common upsell expansion plays. Uh, these are going to depend a lot on your current process um, and what your goals and outcomes are. Um, so uh, meant to be kind of uh, demonstrations, but not uh, not something that you would implement, um, just carbon copy. <clears throat> cool. So what would this look like um, kind of in the product? Uh, 
you'd have a set of clear actions uh, and uh, essentially the the ability to automate uh, as much of the process as possible um, for the rep that has triggered the play. Um, so in this case, uh, you'd have, uh, you know, kind of a, an outline of, hey, this is an upsell opportunity. Um, what I'm supposed to do is review the current product usage. I'm supposed to create an opportunity to track that in Salesforce. Um, and then I'm supposed to uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, send a cadence off to the decision maker. So in this example, you can see this is kind of consolidating a few of those um, different uh, use cases that we just walked through. Um, but from a rep's perspective, they don't have to worry or think about like, is this account, is it the right time to send the cadence? Is it, uh, should I be creating an upsell opportunity or should I wait? Like they know exactly what to do and when. So where we've talked a lot about kind of playbooks in theory, where does Calixa come in? Um, so we equip sellers with the data they need to effectively execute these PLS plays. Um, one of the big things holding folks back is uh, access to uh, all of the data in one place. You have some of it in your CRM, you have some in the billing system, you have some uh, you know, siloed in outreach or sales loft. Uh, and then you have your data team that controls the data warehouse with a lot of the usage data. So Calixa uh, brings that all into one place uh, and allows uh, your SDRs and AEs to uh, essentially run these plays uh, by triggering alerts uh, when the it, it is the right time to reach out um, and have more confidence that the actions they're taking are going to lead to the you know, highest conversion rate um, and highest close rate for their ops. Um, I mentioned data that like the data is honestly one of the, the most important, but also biggest challenges that companies often struggle with. Um, so we've built out no code integration. So whether you have your data in BigQuery or Snowflake, um, you're using Segment or Mixpanel, um, we'll pull in product data from those tools without you having to build out any integrations. Um, traditional CRMs like Salesforce and HubSpot uh, integrate really well. Your support tickets get pulled in from Intercom and Zendesk, uh, and billing data gets pulled in from Stripe. Um, and then we push data out to uh, any connected sales engagement platform like Salesloft and Outreach. Um, so all of that gives you a nice friendly interface with automated triggers and uh, connected manual actions that you can take to ensure your, uh, your sales process and these playbooks are run efficiently. Cool. So we're going to do a quick demo uh, in Calixa of this, but um, before we jump to that, uh, another quick poll. Um, and so this one is going to be, what are the biggest challenges of creating uh, your upsell or expansion playbooks today. Looks like a pretty good mix. Oh, no, people. OK, so it seems like the biggest one is determining the right goals and next steps. Um, yeah, the, it makes sense why this would be the most challenging. Um, Again, there's no real one size fits all approach that works for every company, um, but it's something that we've worked with a lot of folks to help define. Um, and uh, if you're interested in, you know, kind of having a working session where you define what those goals or uh, ideal next steps at different points in your buyer journey looks like, we'd be happy to chat about that. Cool. All right, so we're gonna switch over to a demo. Um, it's gonna be brief, but kind of cover three uh, quick areas. Um, first being the alert, uh, and then the context behind it, um, and how reps can take uh, the corresponding action. So let me go ahead and share my other screen here. So we're going to jump into Inbox. Um, and Inbox is essentially where a rep will live to see all of their uh, plays. 
Um, so this is going to organize the active plays based on the account they're a part of. Um, and it gives you um, a pretty easy way to prioritize your time based on uh, the size of the account, how good of a customer fit it is, um, or things like it, how many premium features they're using. Um, any of the data that is being piped into Clicks that can use in this prioritization. Um, but really the, the benefit here with regards to plays is the rep can quickly see um, exactly which plays this account has active. Um, Courier has triggered this upsell opportunity playbook. Um, and what I'm supposed to do is first off, review their current product usage. So I can click into account details here. I can see uh, what their active user accounts look like, what their usage looks like over time, if they've hit paywalls. Um, a lot of this is really valuable intent data that is uh, going to give the rep confidence that if they're going and asking for money or the team is using the product and the value they're getting today. Um, the next step in the process is to you know, create an upsell opportunity. Um, I can create that opportunity uh, in Salesforce uh, directly from Calixa. Um, you can set default amounts. Uh, you can set the opportunity owner, um, directly move that into a specific stage. Um, all of that is going to sync uh, bi-directionally out of the box. Um, and then the third step in this playbook is to uh, send the cadence to a decision maker in this account. Um, in this case, uh, there could be a few different uh, decision makers, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the sidebar again um, and take a look at who I'd want to reach out to. Um, in this case, uh, we have um, a VP of finance who uh, is a potential decision maker, but their product usage is low. Um, I'm gonna add them to a cadence, um, but I'm, I'm also going to add someone that I think is probably equal seniority, but has high product usage, like this head of product. In this case, uh, adding them both to cadences uh, is gonna ensure I have a high likelihood of setting a meeting with uh, the person who's most likely to um, be an advocate for upgrading the plan. Great. So that was a quick uh, demo of the rep side of the playbook workflow. Um, I also wanted to give you a quick uh, example of how easy it is to set uh, these up. Um, once you've defined the, uh, you know, the kind of the set of actions that should be uh, taken uh, for a given playbook, um, or the context that the rep needs to be aware of, um, you can set up these playbooks with our text editor in the product today. Um, this part just takes a minute. Um, you can choose the connected actions, and these are going to be dynamically populated based on which tools you have integrated with Calixa. Um, and then you can figure uh, when the playbook should run uh, inside of our uh, alert builder. Um, so in this case, you could have something as simple as, hey, I should trigger this playbook when, uh, whenever there's account growth uh, in the last 30 days. Or you could use a, a bit more um, sophisticated logic that's you know looking at how active an account is, how many premium features they've used, if a decision maker has taken actions, et cetera. So the logic is meant to be um, either as simple or as complex uh, as desired. Um, again, um, these playbooks are rarely one size fits all. Uh, so if you have ideas about um, different types of playbooks that you're hoping to run, uh, let us know and uh, we'd love to chat through that with you. Um, let me go ahead and switch back to the slide deck. We're just about ready to wrap up here. Um, and we'll turn it over for questions. So when should a team think about building expansion plays into their sales process? So this is a good question. I think that the timing uh, is important because you, you don't want to build plays prematurely. Um, so 
if you're in that early stage pre uh, product market fit or before you've standardized or have developed any best practices, I'd say that's a bit premature. But once you have uh, certain certain behaviors that a rep follows that you know are kind of the, the best practice or right approach uh, to upselling or um, expanding accounts, that's when it makes sense to start to standardize that process with playbooks. Um, so the playbook you launch on day one is not going to be the same playbook that uh, you're running 18 months from now. They're designed to be iterative. Um, so I always encourage companies to not, you know, overthink uh, the process, get something live, uh, see what works and um, which parts of the process are breaking down and then iterate uh, from there on. So to, to summarize, kind of once you have an idea of what some best practices are, uh, that's when it makes sense to start testing those out um, in, in a standardized way across the team. Cool. Um, how do you know if an expansion play is working? Uh, that's a great question. So I, I think I, it all starts with um, setting a clear goal for that play. Um, expansion plays, typically your goal is to uh, grow the, uh, you know, the total uh, total value of an account. Um, so it, it could be increasing ACV. It could be uh, ensuring, um, you know, net positive uh, renewal revenue. Um, so whatever that goal is, generally it's uh, some way of slicing and dicing revenue. Uh, you essentially you track uh, who's following the play um, and is that having a, a positive impact on that one metric um, and identify um, gaps or you know, people that aren't following the play and uh, see if the results are um, you know, not as strong for that particular metric. But uh, rather than tracking five or six associated metrics with a play, um, it's always helpful to start small and have one key metric in mind. Um, usually, you know, there, there's some back and forth discussion over what the most important metric is, but um, everyone aligning on that metric is going to make uh, the measurement side of things a lot easier. Perfect. Well, uh, I wanted to thank everyone for joining. Um, we have one more uh, one more issue of this playbook series um, that's going to be on the enterprise account consolidation play, uh, which is slightly different uh, here. Um, so the recording will be sent out um, immediately following this event. And if you all have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks for the time, everyone.